Good morning, everybody. Hey, guys. What's up? Hey, hey. Welcome back to now our seventh edition of Facebook Live. This is the third Monday of every month. Check the website. Check Facebook uh, for updates on that and when we're going to go live. But I am Chris. I'm Shane. And we're here to educate you on product and, and training. I'm uh, going to touch a lot on training today. Mostly for the half marathon. Half marathon. Yeah, that distance is our, our topic of focus. That's going to be our deep dive. If you've been watching consistently, then you know, like, we changed our format a couple months ago to where we're picking one topic per month to really dive headfirst into for you guys, um, and that seemed to get pretty positive reviews. And obviously, if you have any questions about half marathon training or anything type like that, in. type them in. Let us know. If they're super relevant to what we're talking about at the moment, we'll kind of answer them. If not, we'll save them to the yeah, end. Wrap we'll up. kind of wrap up with yep, that. Yep, absolutely. So. Uh, quick announcements to start it off. A uh, crazy week last week, my man. Very huh? crazy, very crazy week. Yeah, sale week uh, in the store. Shane and I were out here grinding, full store discounted. Um, also, our uh, anniversary. It was our anniversary. We do a sale week in August every year, another in March. August is to start off our running series. March is as it wraps up, but August also coincides with our anniversary. 41 awesome years now of serving 41. the Central Florida running and walking community. Um, so proud of that, but, but just honored. Sure to have such a great community, um, you know, that, that really wants to, uh, to work with us as much as you guys do. Definitely. And we're happy to be able to give back with things like the sale. And we're happy to put on fun races, yeah. like the celebration of running our anniversary, Absolutely. 5k every year. Great turnout. Awesome turnout. We had uh, Daniel Moore from Melbourne came up to first overall in it. Bill Vanos from team track Shack caught on the scale, 46 years old, Bill Vanos at second years Ooh. old, <laughs> second years old That's at second place, uh, second <laughs> overall, I think is what I was going for there. Um, and then in the women's race, Team Track Check again, my girl, Anya Drew, taken first. Um, Holly Davis in second. It says she's from Asheville in here. I think she's from Melbourne now, though. Um, and then third place, another Team Track Checker, another amazing Masters runner, Michelle Nunez. That's um, all you got. Second, third overall. Killing it. Yeah. Um, but if you miss Celebration of Running and got a you cool want one coming to up. Yeah, be involved in our races, Battle of the Bands next September, Concord Lake Park in Castleberry. Beautiful area to run if you've never run in the Castleberry area and, and seen some of the great lakes and parks that they have to offer. What else is really unique and cool about this run, Shane? Well, you know, a lot of people run with music and stuff like that. In this race, you're not going to have to. You no. Got bands. You've got to provide All for your live place. music. Absolutely. Uh, one at each mile marker, first mile, second, third. They're high-fiving you when you run by. They're jamming. It's a blast. It pumps you up. Then at the end, heart rate going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the end, you get to... Oh, thank you, Cisco. So we're throwing a great run this past Saturday. We try. Um, but it gets you pumped, and then you get to vote for your favorite band at the end while sampling craft beer. Yep, get those carbs immediately back in your body. Got to replenish, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's the best way to do it. Perfect very, way to very do it. good for you. Um, so there was one person missing. From there was. Of running. There was one. Yeah, if you're at most of our races, especially the series races, you probably know the same person uh, tends to win. Um, he also happens to be Shane's uh, roommate and landlord. Yep. That is, yeah, that's our good friend, Ty McCormick. Um, shout, shout out. Shout out, Ty. What's up, brother? Hope you're watching. The um, reason we're bringing up Ty as well is because Ty is a sponsored athlete because he is, he's at he that is. level. 361, one of our newest shoe vendors um, that we love. We've been doing great with them, and we love the relationship we have with them right behind Shane there. Look at that. Um, they're his sponsor. They're going to be here on Saturday doing, like, in-store tech sessions. Uh, kind of being, you know, more informative, letting you know about the product, some gift with purchase, things of that nature. They're also the sponsor for our mid-reef run. So every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m., uh, we meet here at the store. We go run a few miles. Um, and so 361 will be here with Ty. And the reason uh, that Ty was not winning Celebration of Running is he, he was, was busy being in another country winning yes, their race. winning another race. Uh, he was in Iceland uh, taking first overall in the Iceland half marathon. What time did you run, Shane? 105.16. Oof. That is, that's smoking. It's moving. That is, you know, Shane and I, we're both fairly competitive runners in our day. Shane, you know, took it to a higher level than I, than I kind of ever did. But I don't know if either of us ever, in our wildest dreams, even thought reasonably that we could yeah. come close to that time, yeah. if I'm being totally honest. Um, I, I hope eventually, but, you know. <laughs> Ty's an animal, but look, most of us aren't coming into the half marathon out of the gates ready to run 105. We get on a daily basis – Tons of people running their first yeah. half. I oh, would yeah. say, uh, you know, you get a lot of people doing 5K, but as far as people that are really wanting to start their first intensive training cycle, I don't know about you, Shane, but I feel like most customers that I hear are starting something. It's to train for that. Oh, yeah. Distance. 
and not to discount like a 5k or 10k but you know that half is usually when people start putting those stickers on their cars for sure for sure like that's that. when you're rocking the 13.1 that's a badge of honor mm -hmm. no doubt um and, and we happen to put on one that we think is pretty great yeah um absolutely. That, it's the ouc orlando half marathon um we do that the first weekend of december every single year um this year we're changing the route a little bit so next week we should have the map up for you to be able to see that but i think you're gonna be really excited and you'll be very excited because what's the number one complaint you hear and not, not that i want to throw out negatives about our events but every year <laughs> i feel like people always come to me they're like hey i love OUC. i love that it goes to historic downtown that was a great but, half but what's the but uh that brick cobblestone will cobble i always like when bit. i say cobblestone I yeah, feel like i'm not. in like 19th century england yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yes, 30% less brick. Okay. So that's part of the reroute. We have cut 30% out of, of the course of, of that kind of rougher, uh, treading there. Um, and so that's huge. Uh, yeah. That's going to be a lot easier on your legs. Because that's, you know, definitely something in the past that, you know, we're going to kind of get into training, but that would be something that you kind of had to train for. Yes. You know, no doubt. That fires that Achilles a little bit harder. You know, that for improper sure. footing can, you know, really wreak havoc on that balance. Um, so a little bit less of that. You can focus more on the actual mileage in your training, you know, and, and get it going. Yeah, if it's your first half and you don't know uh, where to begin as far as mileage, well, check this out. 13 weeks of 13 miles, kind of hard to see, um, but this is on our OUC flyer. You can come grab one of these in the store. You can click the OUC Orlando Half Marathon uh, race link on our website as well on the upcoming events page. And uh, it's, it's a link that you can click there also. Yeah. You can print this out at home. Great plan for beginners. Uh, you do need some minimal yeah, base mileage, just, right? So, so by the, the 13 weeks essentially starts uh, September 3rd. So by yeah. September 3rd, you need to be able to do at least three miles. Um, whether that's a run, walk, doesn't right. matter. Um, right. But you have to be able to at least complete three miles. That's kind of where the training plan starts at. A um, little bit of a detour here. Yeah. All right. But and a really exciting announcement because you said run, walk. Uh, the, the king uh, the King. kind of founder of the, the run walk method, probably the most legendary um, runner really in, in the country as far as people who definitely one of the most knowledge. recognized yeah. names for sure. Yeah, in, in distance running. Um, but the man, the myth, the legend, uh, the great Jeff Galloway is going to be here for Galloway School this Saturday. Such a good friend of our stores, one of the genuine nicest people you'll meet. I had meet. the pleasure um, of meeting him not too long ago. Yeah. I, I, known jeff my whole Sunday. life it's sunday excuse Sorry. me thank you carrie luckily we're live yes. and we can do this yes. on the fly uh, and, and we've got carrie our galloway uh coordinator here uh correcting us there and i appreciate that so um anyway is galloway training for beginners absolutely yeah absolutely. no galloway is definitely i would say probably the number one way for someone who necessarily you know the, the class of us oh i can run to my refrigerator Right. Um, you know, right. Well, I only run if people are chasing. Yeah, me. yeah, exactly. You know, you, you start out mostly walking, get comfortable with walking distance, maybe throw in a couple of run intervals and stuff right. like that. And you slowly decrease that walk time, increase that run time. Yep. And soon you'll find yourself at that three miles. You're at that three miles. And if you want to like find a good route to test that three miles, if you don't love to run alone, what course happens to be three miles, Shane? Our midweek run. Midweek run. Come out Wednesday. Come hang with Ty. Come try some 361 shoes. Come run three miles. It's, it's like we planned this. It almost is. The synergy is really, it's unbelievable. Um, so as you're going through this, you're starting at three miles, you're working your way up. I think it's really important to listen to your body, right? For sure. Yeah. And, and that's kind of one of the other things that we have incorporated into this 13 weeks of 13 yeah. miles. It's the rest days. Rest of cross train days too. Jump yeah. in the pool, get on the bike. So people think you have to be active seven days a week to be successful and that's not the case it, it can be a recipe for the opposite sometimes if you're needing rest and not listening to your body and you push through you can make it worse yeah you know there's plenty of times where i was you know trying to train through injuries and problems and look you're gonna get aches and pains you're gonna be sore those muscles are gonna be tight yeah um one rule of thumb that i always kind of went by when i was training and stuff like that is if you have to compensate your form for the pain that you're experiencing, yeah. that's when you should back off. For sure. But then there's compensatory injuries, like your toe hurts on the right foot, so suddenly you're landing differently on your left leg, yeah. and then the toe heals, but for the next month you have a nagging left hip because yeah. you were retooling how you, you work the flexor when you landed mm -hmm. or something like that. So, yeah, definitely listen to your body there. But as you go through the course of our 13 weeks of 13 miles, it caps you out at 12 miles. Yeah. And I think that's a really good place for it to stop because um, I know a lot of people that run half marathons and they cap out at eight miles, maybe 10. 
and which look, may work. Yeah, and I think one big component of a race day, especially if you're like doing one of the Disney races where there's thirty thousand people and there's fireworks and like it, there's so much adrenaline. You yeah, know, there's so many people to pull good, you good through vibes. The run, totally. And... Yeah. So so that thirteen doesn't feel as long as maybe it would on your own in a training run, but you've only done ten miles and then you hit that ten mile mark and you're cruising and you're hitting the pace you're supposed to, but you're hurting. Yeah. And that monkey jumps on your back. It's hard to get him off for the next it really three miles. Is. It really is. But if you've run 12, so you know you've only got one extra mile to go, I think that's a more valuable uh, place to be in mindset-wise. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the name of the game is progression. Uh, 100%. It, and that's why, you know, we're starting this training program 13 weeks out. Yeah. Obviously, if you're a little bit more experienced with running and stuff like that, and you, you know, or you have a coach or something like that, you know, have your own training plan and stuff like this, but this is And we great, can give you a coach. Yeah, absolutely. If you've moved on, right? If, if we're going over this plan and you're going, man, that sounds a little rudimentary for me. I've done a plan like that. I want to really focus on a time goal. I want to run a faster half marathon. Join Marathon Fest. Yes. Because that's training that we offer, not just for the full marathon distance, but the half marathon. You're going to be put into pace groups, yeah. right? It's going to be targeted towards your goal. You've got two workouts a week and a long run on Saturday. Um, so it's definitely a great program for those of you looking to take it uh, to that next level, but ultimately going back to the 12 miles, it's respect the distance. Yeah. You know, that's kind of a Definitely. cliche my dad uses, but uh, his last marathon, his last <laughs> full, he only got up to 18 for his long runs. He was just busy working off an injury and he knew it probably wasn't the best idea and like, he finished. And yeah. I'm super proud of him for that, but he bombed the last half of the race and he came back and it was just, man, I didn't take my own advice. It's I true. didn't practice or I didn't respect the distance. And, and you know, you, you think, oh, I've been running for a few years now. 40 in his case, you exactly. know. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, you can kind of feel like you rest on your laurels a little bit. And that's when those uh, those those horrible race stories happen. So they, they jump right up and bite you. Yeah. Forrest Gump. They're, they're not always pleasant for sure. Yeah, man. Um, but, you know, like we we're saying, progression, you know. No doubt. We'll start out, We'll start you at three miles. You know, you'll slowly work your way up to where you're able to run 12. Yeah. Run, walk 12. Yeah. Whichever, whichever yeah, way you exactly. want to go about it. Whatever it caters to, to your style and where you're at as a runner right now. So what are some other mishaps that can lead to not having, like, the world's best experience over the course of a half marathon? Honestly, something very simple and something yeah. we actually deal with on a daily basis. I think we specialize in it. Something like that. Yeah. Um, is a proper shoe fit. Um, a honestly, difference. if a lot of times people like their shoes to fit really snug and tight, right. which is fine. It's a sense of security, I think, with some people, right? They think they're going to fall off. Um, you know, we're going to show you how to lock your foot in there, how to lace the heel in, so where if you have a little extra, you know, wiggle room, some space in the toes, it's actually a positive. Yeah, because over 13 miles, especially here in Florida with, during the summer and fall. Foot's going to swell. Uh, your foot's going to swell. Yeah. Um, it's just a natural thing that happens. There's really, yeah, there's no avoiding it. You, you, unless you come up with a way, which probably isn't healthy. Sure, yeah. Um, also unavoidable in Florida is being barefoot, right, going to the beach, wearing sandals. You don't want to, you know, go uh, out on the lake or to the beach with your friends and you're missing three toenails. Yeah, so they're all that black classic and runner and yeah. mangled foot. It's not the best look. Yeah. Um, and for the most part, it's avoidable. And that's like going into the proper size shoe, which sometimes feels too big, right? If you're, mm. if what you think fits is something that's technically too small, then what does fit may feel big. But after a couple of runs, a lot of times people get oh. used to that and they realize the benefit of really being able to spread those toes out. And, and, and we're not, we're not well. saying that you need to, you know, have an absorbent ex no, excess amount it, of space. It's a bump up of about a half size usually. Yeah. Um, and, and we're going to measure you and in brand to brand that varies, you know, like sure. what we measure isn't going to be the size in every brand that works for it. It's similar to shopping for jeans in a lot of ways, yeah. right? Not a lot of congruency. A lot of, a lot of people scale. get caught up on the fact that, Oh, I've always been a nine. Always been a nine. Yeah. I've always been a nine and a half. Yes. You're, well, you're 10 today. You know, mm -hmm. depending on the brand, like, uh, say for example, some of the A6 shoes run a little short. They can. Yeah. You know, no if, you, if you've been an A6, you know, you might you go into another brand, you might actually go down a half. go down a half size, totally, it, and then vice versa. It right? can go both ways. Um, sure. So whenever, you know, if you're in a store like us um, and we, we suggest something, it's more of a thing that we want to try it out on and see how you feel. About right, it. You for know, sure. We're not for trying sure. to push you into yeah. a specific style of shoe. We want you in what you feel comfortable in, but we want to narrow it down, obviously on size when we can, and that's important, but, but biomechanically too. We're looking at everything from your hips down and how your knees rotate, the ankles, the arches. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more to it. Size is important when you're moving up in distance. A lot of people do end up needing bigger shoes. Uh, however, the most important component of being fit in a store like this 
and why you should do it every time you need new shoes is because biomechanics can change. So if For you've sure. only ever done five Ks and you move into a half marathon, all of a sudden a little muscles in your arch and other parts of your foot might be getting stronger. Yeah, they, they're gonna hold you up a little bit better. They're gonna you know keep that yeah just form together and striking the ground in the proper spot changes the way you run. We've got a reoccurring team track shack theme, right? But my, my main man, Carlos Font, he's team track shack, one of my favorite people. Um, dude lost over or close to, if not right at about a hundred pounds in the course of a year. Ridiculous. He was like a three hour plus half marathoner. He's in the one forties now, like one of the craziest fitness journey success stories that I've ever seen. Um, but dude went down a full width. He was needing a wide shoe, went into a regular width and like a size smaller plus from a stability to a neutral shoe by running more. His that's whole body case. chemistry just changed. Pretty, yeah. That's and a pretty drastic change. That's not normal, right? Don't expect that you're going to flip to an entirely different category, but you might go from needing like a heavy support shoe to maybe yeah. a light to moderate, and we're going to reevaluate that every time. And then also, you want to be tracking how often you're changing the shoes out, right? For so sure. what's a good lifespan on a shoe Normally, and, and most of the shoe companies will kind of tell you this as well, it's about three to 400 miles. Yeah. Now, usually I use that as a guideline. Sometimes right. you'll get more out of your shoes. Sometimes totally. you'll get out less. Um, but you really want to, during that three to 400 mile range, you want to focus on your body. How does it feel? No doubt. It, your legs hurt. Do your feet hurt? Yeah. Um, sometimes sometimes like a little that. twinge in your knee to let you know it's time for shoes. Sometimes the foot itself. And, and flip the shoe over, check the tread. If it's starting to get all smeared up. And, and, and bring in your shoes too. Always. Um, because your tread tells a story. Yeah. Um, yep. Especially when, if you're thinking about bumping up your mileage and training for a half marathon, you know, what worked for you during your regular training may not work, but it's still a great story to see, you know, yeah, it, it definitely it's helps out. going to guide us in the process. So that's kind of the shoe fitting component of the half. Um, really quickly, I, I just want to touch on, on socks real quick. Uh, you, it's going to be soggy. Shane touched on that a minute ago with the swelling. Um, it's the middle of August right now in Florida. This is as hot and humid I think as it is anywhere in the world in yeah. this state in this month. So um, I know you're a big Belega guy, yes? Very big. Very um, big belay yeah, guy. It's it's really important to have good socks when you're out there. And and that's one of the things that I hear most from people is, oh, how do I prevent blisters? My shoes are causing a blister. That may be the case. Yeah. You know, sometimes an improper fit can cause blisters. But I would say the majority of the time it's not in good socks. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly. And if blister is something you're particularly prone to, we got well, one of our good friends, Luke Weber, is our right sock rep. Um, so having the right socks sometimes means right socks, right? That was a, a good little double entendre they came up with in rehearsal uh, today, but so these guys have two layers, right? So the sock rubs against the other layer of the sock instead of against the shoe. That's going to really help prevent blistering. And, um, and you really would just want that technical fiber to kind of wick some of that moisture away from your foot. The, the more you know, sweaty your foot gets, right. obviously the, the softer that skin is and the more likely you're going right. to get some rubbing there. No doubt. And then when we're talking about sweat, um, you want to get into apparel as well, right? I, I mean, how often have you finished a run and you take off that singlet and you drain like you could fill four glasses of water. Imagery. Just sweat leak, you know, Imagery right there. Yeah. Quality. Absolutely. Especially me. I'm a sweater, man. Um, so speaking of Ty, he's also a sweater. So, yeah. Ty, Ty will splash you. Um, but. We've got some questions. Oh, all right. What do yeah, we got? Go for it. So I pulled a hamstring and it hurts to run, but no pain while walking. I rested yesterday. Did I take another day off today? Hope I can run tomorrow. Okay, so that's a really good question. Um, and then I don't know if everyone heard it, so to repeat quickly, uh, pulled hamstring, took a day off. Um, it doesn't hurt when you walk. Right, but it, it's tweaked when you're running. This is at least my personal, and if you feel differently, Shane, jump in. If something's tweaked like that, this is what I almost always tell every customer that's asking me that. Three days is a really good rule of thumb to start with. One's usually not enough rest. So rest it for three days, mm -hmm. then go back out there. If you go back out there and you still can't run and it hurts, you a week. If you come back from a week and you're still having that trouble, go, go see, see a doctor, maybe see a yeah. PT, and we're happy to refer you to some of those people, especially our friends at Florida Hospital. Yeah, uh, and you know, in that time period, you don't necessarily have to be totally stagnant either. You know, you can if it doesn't hurt to walk, right. go out on walk. Right. Yeah, go for a walk, and that's why cross training is on the 13 week schedule. Right, jump in the pool, um, get on a bike. Was there other questions, Maria? Yeah. Do you have a way to keep track of customers buying their shoes so they know how long it's been? Absolutely. Keeping track of customers buying shoes. So, look, if, when I'm at, like, CVS or somewhere and I want my phone number when I'm ringing now, I just hate that. I'm going to be totally honest. So, <laughs> when I'm on the other end of the register, I don't like being the guy who's like, hey, can I get your info, blah, blah, If you don't want to give us your number, if you don't want to give us your email, that's fine. But give us your name because that's how we create your account. So, we're asking everyone that we ring out to make a customer file. 
And we do that for your benefit so that you can look up when you bought them if you are having issues or if you think it's time to replace them. And, and um, you know, that that's obviously a great way to do it when you're in the store and stuff like that. But if you want something to kind of keep track of your own mileage on when you're on your own, um, you know, Garmin's do it. Garmin, you know, you baby. can do that. Um, there's a lot of apps out there on that you can download. Um, but buy a Garmin from us instead. <laughs> yes. Come on now, Shane. We're here to sell things a little bit. You know, yeah. And, and there's definitely, you know, other apps that can keep track of it. But, you know, definitely all encompassing right there. For sure. Um, for yeah. sure. Any other questions? Yeah. Last question and then we'll wrap this up. Cool. So, running my first half marathon in November, Disney food is a brand guy. Um, any tips to hydrate slash eat the night before or week of living? You should always be hydrated. Yeah. You yeah, never should not be hydrated. Hydrate or dihydrate. Shout out, Jay Brooks. I see him, see him loading the register up over there. Um, you always need to be drinking water. If you're a runner in the state of Florida, I mean, you're looking for eight to ten glasses a day. Easy. Yeah. You got a water bottle at work. Refill and it as far as deep. food goes, obviously, you want to keep it as natural and healthy as you can leading up right. to the race. But you want it to be what's in tune to your normal diet. Exactly. Too. You don't want to, you don't want to change things up too much. Um, that's the, one of the things that I think that a lot of people have yeah. when they, when they don't have success stories for their races. Oh, it's because I try, I, I right. was trying some nutrition right. during the so, race. And a Disney race, especially a lot of times you're up at two in the morning to get to like a 5am start. Cause you got to jump on buses, things like that. So you need something in your stomach. Some people can do half marathons, like on an empty stomach to start the day. Not very often. Um, dry toast and a banana, I think is kind of one of the simplest, like can't miss bananas and give you some potassium. Maybe throw a little peanut butter on there crap. if you're feeling spicy. Crap. Yeah. Yeah. A peanut butter doesn't always settle with everyone's stomach when they're running. Um, but if it's something you usually handle pretty well, it can add a little protein into the mix. But other than that, yeah, you know, some dry plain carbs, um, night you're avoiding before, butter and stuff you get rid of oil. Night before, you know, belly. you know, just simple pastas, simple stuff like that can always be great, you know? Yeah. Get a little bit of that carbo loading. Yeah, carb loading doesn't necessarily mean pounds and ravioli, right? You don't need a stomach full of ricotta in the morning. But if but if you put like a little bit of marinara sauce on some spaghetti and yeah. and scarf that down, there's enough time to digest it. You know, you're not trying to wake up full. But mm -hmm. very last question, and then we gotta open the store. So sure. Yeah. Just went to Winter Creek Springs running group for uh, their running group. So. In Winter Springs? Or here, maybe a group run. Sure, yeah, well, yeah, we've mentioned our group run a couple of times, right? Every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m., Shane and I are usually there, come yeah. run with us. Um, gosh, in Winter Springs, I just, I don't know that area quite as well. I you know. You can go to our website. You can go to our website. Our resource yeah, page. Uh, there's a resource page, there's a regional event page, so you can click either of those, and that'll show you a lot of the stuff um, in the area. I know there are groups out there, though, I just, I wish I, I had a better name to give you, but definitely check out that resource page. Um, Look, super quickly, we do need to open the store up, but uh, to touch on one last thing for half marathon, you're going to get sweaty. So we wanted to just hit on apparel. Uh, sometimes you can get stinky when you're really sweaty when you're training. So Some more than others. All of our apparel wicks moisture, just like the socks. All of it, for the most part, helps with smell. Nothing does it better than by far my personal favorite brand. We got our Lululemon stuff right here. Metal Vent Surge, lined with silver ions. You get five, six years, and this thing isn't going to smell. Color's not going to fade. Um it makes a difference if you've ever smelled yourself in a two-year-old. Yeah. You know the, the pure, the harsh polyester shirts that are like staticky and stick to you when they come out of yeah. the dryer? Yeah. You get them, you just cleaned them, right? And you take a whiff and mm -hmm. you, I got to throw this thing away. Yeah. Like it just, it doesn't work out. So if you want something that's going to last years, it may cost more money, but you're, you're paying for quality and, and it's a partnership. You want to have track track shack. If you want to have track shack. This is more post run, right? This is one of those uh, half cotton items. This isn't something that's as technical. This is wearing around town post run, but this is our, our co-branded, uh, the five year V. Five year coming from the fact um, that it's designed to not get that stink. It's not going to fade. You know, they're basically promising you at least five good years of, of no shrinking, good wear. And we printed up the logo. These have been selling like hotcakes since we printed them. So come get them. There's a few left. And then we're going to do another run in a different color. Um, but, but keep your eyes tuned for that co-branded, you know, Track Shack uh, and Lulu apparel. So, I think that's it, my man. Yeah, that one went a little long. It went a lot longer than we expected. I'll be honest. Oh, yeah. I think we were worried about having enough content and then realized we had too much. So, um, any last questions? Anything like that? And Maria says we're not allowed to answer. Okay, that. well, <laughs> so, <laughs> we've been cut off. Uh, we, we should probably get the store open. That is a wrap. Thank you for joining us. As always, we're going to see you next month. Hopefully, we're going to see you on Wednesday with Ty and the rest yeah. of the 361 people, or maybe Saturday when 361 will be here as well. Uh, but as always, it is our pleasure to be here with you. I am Chris. September 3rd. He's Shane. And I'm Shane. We didn't catch that cue, but we're signing off. Thanks, guys. All right.